We've been spending time in a number of videos now talking about frequency responses of linear time invariant or LTI analog systems. And now in this video, we're finally gonna start talking about applications of these types of systems, primarily through filters. This video is focusing on defining ideal filter behavior, and we'll also try to explain why ideal filters are not realizable. Filters are systems that are designed for passing or not passing signals of particular frequencies. We usually refer to a filter as having some particular pass bands and stop bands. So filters will pass through signals that are in their pass bands and they will prevent signals from passing through that are in their stop bands. Filters have a lot of wide application in many areas of signal processing, including audio signals, so being able to have, for example, speakers that are designed for passing through signals of particular frequencies, like subwoofers for low frequency signals. Communication systems are usually designed for passing through signals of a particular frequency, especially for wireless communication. Now we're going to explain the four main types of ideal filters. The first is the low pass filter. Low pass filters will pass through signals that have low frequencies, and then there'll be a threshold frequency beyond which we then have a stop band and the higher frequency signals don't pass through. High pass filters are the opposite. They won't pass signals that are up to the cutoff frequency but signals that are of higher frequencies will pass through. Bandpass filters are a combination of low pass and high pass, where we end up having a particular finite band where signals will pass through, and then we'll have stop bands both for lower frequencies and higher frequencies. So bandpass filters have two cutoff frequencies. Band stop filters are like bandpass filters in that they have two cutoff frequencies, but instead for signals between those two cutoff frequencies, they have a stop band, and then their pass bands are for frequencies lower than the lower cutoff and higher than the higher cutoff frequency. We call these frequency responses ideal because they have very sharp transitions that occur at the cutoff frequencies. This means that an ideal filter will have a particular behavior right up until the cutoff frequency, and then it'll switch right at that frequency and then have a different behavior right after that. It's good to understand whether or not these ideal filters are realizable, and we can use the low pass filter as an example. We go from having an ideal square in the frequency domain to having a sync function in the time domain. The sync function is defined as a sine over the argument, so sync of x is the same as sine x divided by x, and this is defined for all x, so in the time domain this is defined for all time. This is a problem because this means that the sync function is anti-causal, so it means that the system is supposed to be responding before the input even arrives. This isn't physically possible, so that's what makes an ideal filter unrealizable. This means we would have to wait infinitely long in order to actually capture all of an output signal, and that also isn't very practical. We can find that the same features apply to other ideal filter types, so generally the ideal filters are not realizable. In our next video, we'll talk about approaches that are used to be able to actually realize analog filters in practice. So there are certain tricks that we apply to these ideal responses, particularly in the time domain, so we can go from having an unrealizable filter to a realizable filter. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. You can leave feedback in the comments and subscribe if you're interested in catching more videos in this series. There's also a lecture notes PDF in the video description. See you next time.